QuickBooks Desktop 2024 Customer Prepayment Purchase Order Bill Invoice and Receive Payment Forms. Get ready and some coffee because we're locking into some non-stop QuickBooks Desktop 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Sample Company File. We set up in a prior presentation using the enterprise version of the QuickBooks Desktop software so we can practice using the unearned revenue new feature within it. Under the View tab, we've got the Hide icon bar selected, the Open Window selected, Open Window windows open on the left hand side under the company drop down we have the home page open going into the reports so we can open the major financial statement reports like we do every time company and financial looking at that balance sheet standard report let's customize the report change that range from 010127 tab 123127 tab fonts and numbers change in the font to bring it up to 14 is that okay yes okay then then we're going to go to the reports drop down again company and financial this time the p the l the profit loss the income statement change the range this time from 010127 to let's go to 06327 and then i want to see this one on a month by month breakout month by month and then customize the reports fonts and numbers changing the font up to 14 and okay yes and okay so that's the setup process we do every time we've been running the multiple scenarios here the standard scenario in january then we did a couple scenarios with a negative AR, February and March, or, or March through uh, May, and now we're running our new scenario here in June. Let's recap what we did thus far. Home tab, we're looking at a situation where we're selling a large product, in our case a surfboard, a psychedelic surfboard because it's got a crazy airbrush on it, and we want to then we made an estimate for it so we're imagining the customer came in wanted the surfboard we made the estimate and then we made a sales order which basically locks in the estimate that has been made and then we asked for a deposit because we're going to go up here and order the custom surfboard and we want to make sure this guy's locked into the sale so then we jumped over and received a payment skipping as the arrows are saying here the invoice so usually when we do that under the old method, that would make a negative AR, which would be okay from an internal reporting standpoint or bookkeeping standpoint, but for external reporting purposes causes a problem because it should be a positive liability. And so the new method, QuickBooks allows us to make a positive liability. So let's just check that out. Balance sheet, instead of making a negative accounts receivable over here, it made another account down below and we called it customer deposit. There is our $50. When I look at the sub ledger reports under the reports drop down, if I go to the receivables, we now have two of them we need to track. We're going to go to the customer balance detail. This tracks the accounts receivable. Let's customize it. Let's make the fonts and numbers. Let's just bring it up to 12. Let's not get crazy with the 14. Yes and okay. It's not here yet because it's under the, it's a liability. So we have another report now, a sub ledger for the customers and receivables. And this is going to be the open, what did we call it? Open pre open prepayments. There that is. Let's customize this report. Fonts and numbers. Change the font up to 12 as well and okay 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 
Then if I go into my customers drop down, the customer center, this is where our customers are hanging. They're hanging out over here. So there is our customer. We could see that we made an estimate. We had the sales order and then we got that payment. We should now be able to apply that payment to the invoice, which is what's going to happen next on the customer side. But before we do that, we have to actually buy the product. So we're going to go over here and say, we don't have it yet because it was a custom order. We made a sales order. Now we want to make a purchase order from the sales order so that we can then go to our vendor and purchase the product. All right, so let's do that. Let's go back into the customer detail. I think the easiest way to do that would be from the customer center. We go into the uh, sales order. And then I'm just going to say, make a bill, uh, a purchase order from it. So create a purchase order. So we're going to the purchasing side and it says, create the purchase order for all allowed items. That's what we want. Pull the whole thing in there. There's just one thing. And then this is going to be, uh, what did we call it? A uh, customer prepayment vendor, which is a funny name for a vendor, but I'm just trying to say everything has that name so that we can tie it to this this scenario that we're running out this is going to be 06 let's say 0427 tab 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 this is another internal document not going to record anything it's only for 100 dollars because that's the cost of the surfboard not the sales price which was 175 and no sales tax is being applied here because we're going to apply the tax on the sales side internal documents that we could track in excel this is just going to be the PO or purchase order, purchase order, no financial transaction happening. We track that internally. So I'm just going to save it and close it. Where do we track it internally? Closing this out. We track it not in the customer center, but in the vendor center. So we go to the vendor drop down, vendor center, and we could see there uh, where we can see it somewhere somewhere because I should have named the vendor's name with a four so I could have seen it easier. What did I call it? Uh, customer prepayment. Uh, so I should have put a four. That's what I was doing before, but that's okay. Here's the uh, open purchase order. And then the next thing would be, we would have a bill that when we receive the surfboard. So let's do that. I'm going to double click on this and we would then we could say create a sales receipt i'm just going to go directly to a bill i'm going to close this out home page and let's say now we're going to receive the inventory with a bill so we we got a box with a surfboard and it. it's got a psychedelic air breath and that was ordered for and we want the uh and it's got a bill with it so this is going to be the customer the vendor what did i call it i called the vendor customer prepayment vendor and then it says there's an open purchase order do we want to add that i'm paraphrasing i'm going to say yes we do i would like to do that quickbooks thank you for work asking this is going to be 06 let's make it 0727 tab 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 there's the hundred dollars and there's the item down below now what's going to what's this going to do it's a bill and therefore, it's going to increase the accounts payable. That's what bills do. It's going to increase the sub ledger for this vendor. And the other side is going to go to inventory for the surfboard, putting it on the books for 100 and tracking the sub ledger for inventory. I don't need to make it billable because I don't want to pull this into the invoice. We will create an invoice because I'm going to turn around and sell this to the customer. But we're going to create the invoice from uh from the sales order in our case so if i record that in a journal entry format over here i could say let's do it with a journal entry what's going to happen we're going to say the inventory is going to say equals the inventory is going up and the other side is going to be equal to the uh 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 accounts payable that's it and it should be over here. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy that and put that over here. Uh, I have to cut it, cut it, and put it over here. And then I gotta format paint this down here. Sorry about that. And this is gonna be a bill type form for one hundred dollars. One hundo negative one hundo inventory up top. Let's record it. Inventory is gonna go up by the one hundo, and then the uh the liability accounts payable is going to go up 
Both of those accounts have a sub ledger to them. Inventory, we need to track it by units of items typically and accounts payable, we, we need to track who we owe by the vendor. Notice nothing is happening down here for the cost of goods sold at this time because we're using a perpetual inventory system. So I'm gonna go back on over. Let's check that on this side. I have to make it smaller so I can see the button to complete the transaction. So I'm gonna save it and close it, save it and close it. And then back up to full super sized. And then we're gonna go on over to the balance sheet to see what happened, K Paso, what happened? We're gonna say that the inventory went up. The inventory went up. There I said it, because I said I was gonna say it. We're gonna say the inventory went up. The inventory went up. There, I do what I say I'm gonna do. So there it is, $100 bill inventory goes up. The other side went to the AP, accounts payable. So there's the accounts payable double clicking on it it's going up we can see if we had the sub ledger for the vendor vendor we could see the ap vendor balance detail we can see uh the bill here if i find that customer because i na i should have numbered it there it is that's the same as normal so nothing really new with because we're really the new thing is happening on the customer side not the vendor side we can also see that of course in the vendor center so now we've got the bill and we would have to pay the bill later but we're not going to do that right now because that's not our point of focus we're on the customer side so now if i go back to the home page we now have made the estimate sales order we've got a down payment and then we use that possibly to help us purchase the custom surfboard which we now have because it's shipped to us now we're going to create an invoice and we're going to apply that $50 to it and then the remaining balance will still be due right so we're going to say all right this is the the critical moment here because we have to apply that credit out so if I go into the customer center now I can see over here it looks nice from the bookkeeping side because I can see that $50 and I can see that I would apply that to the 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 invoice just like we did with the negative accounts receivable method so let's go ahead. I could go into the sales order and say, let's make an invoice from it. Now I'm going to create the invoice from the sales order. And I'm going to say, make a, oh, no way. Yeah, that's right. Make the invoice and then create the invoice for all. Yes. And that's what I want to do. So then I'll tab it through. This is going to be 0609, let's say 27. Tab, 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 tab. And so now the invoice pulls in and we're charging 175. We bought it for 100. Sales tax is going to be charged for 1356. What's this going to do when we actually record it? It's actually kind of complicated. The invoice is going to cause accounts receivable to go up by the 188.56. The other side is going to be revenue 175. The amount that we charge the different sales tax 1356 is going to be going to a liability account and inventory is going to be going down by $100, which is not on the report, but is driven by the item and cost of goods sold is going to go up by $100. The effect on net income will be the sales price, 175 minus the cost of goods sold, $100. And the sub ledger for accounts receivable will be impacted for customers, as well as the sub ledger for inventory tracking the items. So actually a lot going on here. And so we're going to say, let's check that out in a journal entry format. And let's check that out from a journal entry format. That's what I'm going to say. That's what I said. So we're going to say that this is going to be accounts receivable is going to go up. Wait, let's do it this way. This is going to be an invoice. And then A to the R is going up. Accounts receivable for the sales for the sale. And then the sales is going to go up or income. And that's going to be for 175. And then we're also going to say that there's going to be sales tax payable, sales tax payable, which they're charging us apparently 0.0775. So this should be a negative because it's a credit that should be equal to this times 0 0.0075. No, too many zeros. So 13, 13 and negative sum for the plug here is going to be then that means we're going to charge 188.13. 188, 188, hold on. 0 0.0775 sales tax 
188.0775. Is that right? Okay. Good thing I checked. All right. And then we're also going to have then the cost of goods sold for the $100. That's the cost of the inventory. And we're going to have the inventories going down by the unit of inventory that we sold. So let's record all that starting with this one. I'll make it green so we can see what in the world is happening around here. Let's actually uh, make it full screen so, it's, so I can put more stuff here. So I'm gonna go then to the AR up top. R, and this is gonna be equal to the 188.56, so accounts receivable first time it's impacted as opposed to the other method, which would already have that negative 50 in it. And then the income is happening here. 175 is going up in the credit direction. And then the sales are gonna be, I'm sorry, the sales tax is gonna be here. That's a liability. So there we have that. And then invent, our cost of goods sold is gonna go up. So that's an expense going up in the debit direction. So the effect on net income is 175 minus 75. And then the inventory, which was at 100, because this is the only thing we recorded in it, is now going back down by the hundo. And so there, so there we have it. All right, uh, let's go back on over and see if that is what happens over here. Let's save it and close it, and then we'll check it out. Save it and close it. This customer has available credits. I should have applied the credits first, but if I don't do that, notice what it does here. It says, do you want to apply the credit out? Would you like to apply the credit? I'm gonna say yes. Now it's pulling in this credit in a similar fashion as we saw when we had the negative receivable. So the process looks much the same from an internal bookkeeping standpoint. Once you apply any available prepayment credits to this invoice, you won't be able to make any changes. Now that, uh, well, so that's okay. We could delete the invoice possibly if we had to and then do it again that way possibly, but we're going to say, okay. And so then it recorded it. If I go back into that invoice, you can see now it applied that $50 payment. Now, the other way we could have done that is we could have said, apply the credit up top before we said uh, save and close. And I believe we could have applied the credit in the same fashion as we as we did before. So similar process as the negative receivable, uh, but, but now it's properly tying out to that unearned revenue account. So this is the 138.56 that is still owed at this point. Notice up top, I'm at 188.56 because I need to do another step here. What's the next step I need to do? I also need to say, as I recorded this invoice, I'm going to reduce the the uh, customer deposit needs to go down. Customer deposit needs to go down, man. You need to go down. You're going down. Customer deposit. And then the other side is going to go into the accounts receivable for the $50. And so now I'm going to say, all right, customer deposit goes down. I'm going to double click on it. It's going to go down with a debit. Boom. So it's back down to zero. And so we're back at the normal. And then this one, uh, AR is, is going to go down. And so now it's at 138.56, right? So there's our 138.56 on the invoice. This $50 is just a reporting thing. It doesn't change the actual transaction we saw with the invoice, uh, that would be recorded for the invoice, right? So I'm going to say save it and close it. So in other words, if I if I look at the transaction that was recorded, balance sheet, we're going to say that what happened, K Paso, what happened, the accounts receivable goes up by that 188.56, the full amount of the invoice. Notice it's not going up by only the 138.56. It's going up by the full amount. This is just an informational thing down here because that 50 has already been recorded. So I'm going to close that out. The other side's going to the P and L, profit and loss. And so there's the 175 that got recorded there. That looks good. The sales tax payable back on the balance sheet, back to balance sheet is going to the sales tax payable right there. And so there we have that invoice here. And then we have the, the inventory side of things. Inventory is going down, dude. Dishes are done, dude. Inventory. Uh, where did that what are you talking about with dishes 
I don't know, it's got a lot of D's, so it sounds cool. Dishes are done, dude. Whatever. So then we've got the inventory went down, closing that out. And then on the profit and loss, we've got the 100 cost of goods sold down here. You can see the impact on net income, 175 minus 100. It's the same as the other scenarios. This one, we didn't complete that scenario because it was a subscription model. And we're back to the same point that we were at uh, with the equivalent model, which was like the second one that we did here. And then on the balance sheet, if we look at our, our accounts receivable subledger on the customer center, no, not in the customer, in the customer balance detail, uh, notice our, in here, all I have is uh, an invoice and then we have this journal entry. Now that's a new thing, right? Because we had to have this journal entry to pull to pull in the fact that we had the unearned revenue. So that's just like basically this journal entry that I made down here. Now notice, so that's another thing that's kind of weird because usually, and it's something that again, it's not as, as, as nice as the negative receivable from a bookkeeping standpoint, although not a customer center. Now I've got these two journal entries down here. That's kind of weird. It's kind of ugly. It's kind of messy because in the last one, when I did it this way with a negative receivable, I don't have that, right? So from an internal bookkeeping standpoint, it's kind of ugly to see these journal entries, but you know, it's not the, not the biggest deal. Also, if I go to my lists drop down and I, go, and I go to my chart of accounts and I look at my inactive accounts here, uh, they have uh, a, an account for prepayment transfer. So let's go, so this is, they made it inactive so you don't post stuff to it accidentally but we still have this added account and these journal entries which give potential for people to mess things up right now you could also say well why do they even use this account because you would think that you could just do this journal entry right it should just be a debit to the 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 liability customer deposit lowering it and then a credit to the accounts payable what did they do instead uh they 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 made this clearing account uh, and then and then took it in and out of this clearing account. So right here's uh, the customer deposit on this side and then the receivables, but it's going in and out of this new account, which is a clearing account. So they kind of added an, another step. I'm not exactly why they did that because you would think they could have done it with one journal entry that looks like this without that added clearing account, but these are tricky accounts here because the accounts receivable has that sub ledger, which QuickBooks usually kind of nicely actually restricts you from posting to uh, a lot of times. So, and, and of course, the other account that they added, that we added, should only be used, this customer deposit account should only be used for this process. So maybe for whatever reason, then for to restrict the transactions to those two accounts, they had to make this clearing account. So that's the that's the added level of complication. It's pretty easy from a bookkeeping standpoint, but we've seen that the added level of complication is that of course we need another account. You're gonna have to have the the liability account down here. That adds a level of complication and potential for people to mess things up. And then when we take it out of unearned revenue and apply it to the accounts receivable, that's another journal entry, which is another step. And then within that journal entry, they actually add a clearing account, which shouldn't cause a problem, but it's another potential area where problems could be caused. And when you look at the internal bookkeeping system, then you have these two extra transactions because there were two journal entries instead of just one, if they could have just done it with one journal entry. Now there's two journal entries, which is kind of ugly, but you know, not a big deal because you're like, okay, I see what's happening those two are just netting out against each other. And that's, that's a QuickBooks thing. And from my side on the bookkeeping side, I would just basically say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ignore those as just part of the process basically, but it's not quite as clean as, you know, this process over here. Now, then of course, the final step would be that if we go back into the homepage that we would receive the payment, receive the balance that is still due. So I can go back onto the customer center here and say, now we have the invoice. Let's open the invoice. And let's say that we're going to receive payment from it. Let's go into 
the is that the right invoice hold on a second am I in the right place I should be in this one so I'm into this invoice and then I'm gonna say receive payments and it opens up the receive payment notice it's not a prepayment this time so it looks like the prepayment form we used before but it's not because we didn't make it from the purchase order and so there's no prepayment thing here so it's just a normal payment it populates the amount that's still due not on the prepayment but on the invoice now we have it normally what it looks like normally it has an invoice down here and it normally populates the whole amount of the invoice that is still due the whole amount of the invoice was for 188.56 but we already collected as a prepayment fifty dollars of it so this is going to let's say this is as of 06 let's say 15 uh uh 27 what's this going to do well it's a customer prepayment or a customer payment <laughs> which normally decreases the accounts receivable and it will this time and the other side is going to go into a cash account in our case unearned revenue let's check it let's make a journal entry for that uh i'm gonna i can't see my format painter let's just try to copy this down because i don't want to show my ribbon up top let's go boom and then i'll delete this and then i'll say this is going to be receive payment what's going to happen in essence cash is going up and the other side is going to bring down the a to the r for the amount is still left which is uh the full amount was 188.56 minus the 50 dollars deposit in essence so the 138.56 still there negative of that cash double click in the cash plus cash is going up to 188.56 and the ar would go back down at this point a to the r going back down and there we have it so now our cash has been collected let's check that out on this side to see it i have to make the screen a little smaller so i'll bring it down bring it down to 125 so i can just see the button save it and close it and then i'll bring it back up to supersized supersized i have to, i like to have it supersized but then i have to unsupersize it in order to tie my shoes otherwise i can't see my feet when i'm supersized i can't see my feet and i can't tie my shoes but otherwise supersized is okay uh what was i doing so then if i go to my balance sheet then I'm going to say that the unearned revenue here has now uh, gone up with the prepayment. Looks good. The other side's going into the accounts receivable. Accounts receivable. So that looks good. And then if I go to my customer balance uh, detail, you can see what is in here. So now we've got the, the invoice that was then tied out to the prepayment which looks like a journal entry because that's what was pulled in from uh from the unearned revenue type of account and then the other side so it looks pretty good in here but it's probably not quite as clear as the other method where you can see kind of the payment you can see it as a payment here but not bad the journal entry is a little messy but and then if you go into the customer center then again you could see the whole process pretty clearly and it looks almost the same as the negative AR process, almost the exact same process here from an internal bookkeeping standpoint, but you just got that added messier thing of these two accounts that are journal entries and you have some added potential for causing havoc with another clearing account and another account for the liability account and another kind of phantom transaction here that is happening. So those are the, some of the pros and cons.